Hi, why don't you make your own damn plugin? Or at least that's what I call my framework that I created for you guys. Yeah, so um, I'm really like a uh, LV2 plugin development curious myself. And, and as I've said, at, at least at some point, you know, I do these videos at the same time that I learn this stuff myself. So I'm no way professional in this, but I wanted to create something that is really entry level so that you can easily get into this stuff because I also created my first like a delay plugin. I was like so enthusiastic about that. And uh, I just want you to have the same kind of like the opportunity really easily entry level uh, introduction to this plugin development. So what I have here is make your own damn plugin framework. So if you're really hastily, you can just go in and copy the five lines here, run them through the, your, your um, terminal and it gets you installed with a plugin called my amazing plugin. Then you can just go in and dig into the source code what it does. Let's uh, actually copy three first lines here. So the first line is uh, obviously installing all of the, you know, the build stuff that you need to have and, and, and dependencies. You obviously need the LV2 development um, package as well and, and so on. So let's just, you know, copy those there and, and go to a um, um, terminal. And I'm putting this on my uh, temporary folder. Just paste here like that. And it will ask you password if you haven't typed it in for a while uh, because of the... Uh, pseudo command and the installing stuff. But now we are on my repositories LV2 plugins folder and here we could now start initiating a new plugin. But I will actually open already uh, the VS code just to show you the um, kind of like the code or the, the tree that I have there. So if I go to the uh, temp and pseudo meta studio, I could just open basically this folder. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's trust the authors. And here we have the LV2 plugins source. And here are all of the plugins that I have done. And uh, here, there's also something called template here. And this template is the one that's going to be used to create the, you know, your plugin. So if we go here back to the, uh, the bash terminal, I can just do make MYODB, oh, MYODB, make your own damn plugin, create, and then give the name of your plugin. And let's call it, uh, well, test plugin. And now we saw that there's actually now a new folder here under the source. It's called test plugin. It has all of the, you know, the uh, header file and the turtle file for, you know, defining what, what is, you know, inputs and outputs of your plugin. And then the actual uh, CPP fly, file that has the signal processing. And the signal processing is just this one function here, this, this run function. Uh, so just dig into that and see what it does. And, and, uh, you're, you're definitely fine with that, I'm sure. There's only like basically two functions in this in this class, so it's really easy to get into with this. Then when you have done, you know, whatever you do it for it, just do make MYODP uh, build and install and give the same name. So it was test plugin. And that's it. Now if I open Carla and go to add plugin, we should see test plugin here and yes we do and the test plugin is now here this one and it has one input one output and it has only volume and uh, if we go here the rent cycle you can see from the parameters that we have also the enable here so you could actually map this to some MIDI device and you know cut the signal or you could also map the volume to a pedal or whatever and control the volume with an external pedal really simple plugin um, so this was kind of like the uh, introduction for this. I'm thinking about creating kind of like a series for this at least. Something that needs to be done is, is a ring buffer. I already have it done but I want to explain how it works because what is about the DSP plugins is that you really cannot uh, or you, you need to be really careful with the memory management thing. You cannot allocate memory so you need to have something called ring buffer if you want to really um, you know, do something with a little bit more of the single than just the one discrete single piece of, of uh, float value. Ah, that's all coming in the next episode. So stay tuned. Thanks. See you. Bye.